good morning dear children in the last class of class 5 evs we have uh, finished the lesson lesson number 3 in natural balance where we have learned a lot of thing i have also explain and discuss with you all the question answers so oh, what we have done in the last class let me give you a quick recap so that it will remain it's it will be easier for you to learn in a natural balance we have learned about photosynthesis such as the process by which green plants make their food in the presence of chlorophyll sunlight carbon dioxide and water is known as photosynthesis and i also told you that uh, uh, plants are known as consumer uh, sorry plants are known as producers and we are consumer why because plants can produce their own food that's why they are known as producer and we are known as consumer because we don't know how to produce our own food and we depend totally on plants or animals as well as uh, we have learned a lot of thing in uh, like uh, different types of plants such as parasitic plants and then insectivorous plants now parasitic plants are the plants that obtain nutrition by growing on other plants called parasitic plants such as dodder rafflesia and many more in the same way carnivorous or insectivorous plants are those plants uh, that obtain nutrition by eating small animals such as insects flies and bugs are called carnivorous or insectivorous plant next one is uh, we we learned about in insectivorous plant example such as venus flytrap pitcher pitcher plant i have shown you di different pictures of insectivorous plant as well and uh, in the f uh, in f in the point of like uh, food for animals we have learned about the all animals are known as consumer why because they totally depend on plants and different types of animals are there such as herbivores carnivores omnivores scavengers and decomposers now in uh, Uh, herbivores, as I already explained, uh, the animals which eat plants only are known as an uh, herbivores, such as cow, deer, buffalo, goat, many more. In the same way, carnivorous animal, I already explained you about carnivorous animal that the animals who uh, eat or feed on flesh of other animals are known as carnivorous animals, such as lion, tiger, etc. And omnivores are uh, who eat both plants and animals, such as crows, cockroaches, and bears are omnivores. Scavengers. some animals help us to keep the environment clean by eating dead animals they are called scavenger hyenas vultures and crows and next at the last but not the least we have learned about uh, decomposers some organism obtained their food by consuming dead and decaying plants are called uh, decomposers uh, such as bacteria fungi earthworm etc also we have learned about uh, food chain so a food chain is the chain formed when plants are eaten by animals and then these animals are eaten by other animals again we have uh, we have also learned about food web food web a food chain does not exist independently in nature different different interconnected food chains form a food web also we have learned about extinction of living uh, organism how plants and animals are getting extin uh, are on the way of extinction and this is this happens because of an increase in the number of predators climate change or loss of natural habitat and i have already uh, after the f once we finish the lesson we, i have already explained all the i have already dis discussed with you all the question answer of the same lesson so now today we are going to start a new chapter from the lesson evs from the class 5 lesson number 4 evs the name of the lesson is the plant story as you can see in the picture the name of the lesson is the plant story so uh, first of all i will be giving you one introduction for, to the lesson the plant story by going through the name of the lesson itself where you can get an idea that the lesson uh, will be about of like it's all about the plant about the germination of seed about the saplings about different parts of plants about different parts of uh, seeds how plants germinate what are the things it's required to germinate what are the roles of role of soil or rainfall or water and many more thing so let us start the lesson let me first give you an introduction as you can see in the picture here when uh, a girl is talking to his uh, talking to her father that baba these plants are so small how will they grow then what his father is saying that tithi these are baby plants they will grow soon if they get air sunlight and water so going through their conversation it is very uh, obvious that uh, we are getting a knowledge about how a plants grow with the help of what with the help of 
air, sunlight and water. In the next picture as you can see I thought plants grow from seeds. What the uh, baby girl is saying that I thought plants grow from seeds but what father again saying some plants grow from seeds and some can be grown by planting baby plants in soil. So we will learn about this thing that how some plants grow, grow from seed itself and how some plants grow from planting baby plants in the soil. So these, these are the conversation which is going on in between father and a girl child. In the next picture as you can see a seed has been a seed is there and different parts of seeds are mentioned. So it is all about a structure of a seed. Before directly going to structure of the seed I want to discuss with you about growing plants. Growing plant is important as our life largely depend on them. So growing plant is very much important for us as human being. Why? Because our life is largely depend on them. How? We uh, All we know that we get oxygen from where? From plants. We get food from where? From plants. We are wearing cotton cloths and many natural fiber cloths using natural fiber in our day to day life and those natural fiber are coming mostly from where? Plants. We are taking our meals whether it is breakfast, lunch or dinner or snacks. Mostly it comes from where? From plants. So plant is the kind of basic things for us. So plants, uh, uh, so growing plant is important as our life largely depend on them. Most plants are grown from seeds. Flowers change into fruits and fruits have seeds inside them. Seeds grow into new plants. Before we learn about the growth of a seed, let us learn about the structure of a seed. So as you can see in the picture, it is the structure of a seed. A seed has an outer covering. A seed has an outer covering called a seed coat or testa. The outer covering as you can see in the picture it is written testa as well as in the bracket it is written seed coat. It means it can be said testa or the seed coat. Its function is to protect the baby plant inside. So what is the function of the seed coat to protect like whenever we are wearing a jacket or blazer or coat or anything what is the uh, what is the function of that of, of wearing those things because it protect our internal body from cold or from rainfall or from dust in the same way the seed coat or the testa's function is to protect the baby plant inside so it means a baby plant is there inside the seed there is a tiny hole in the seed called micropyle through which the seed absorb water each half of a seed is known as seed leaf or cotyledon so each half of the seed is known as cotyledon here in the picture as you can see it has been clearly demonstrated two parts of the seeds which are known as cotyledons and the baby plant is known as radical this is the structure of a seed it stores food for the developing baby plant so cotyledon stores food for the developing baby plants the baby root is called a radical the baby root as you can see it is known as a radical and baby shoot is called plumoil and the baby shoot is called the plumoil. When a seed sprouts the cotyledon are the first leaves that the plant has. Some plants have one cotyledon while other have two. An embryo is a baby plant inside the seed. It grows into a new plant. So this is all about the structure of the seed. Now it's about stages of germination of a seed as you can see in the picture this, this is the picture of stages of germination of a seed if seeds get the right amount of water air sunlight and warmth they produce a baby plant called seedlings the process by which a seed grows into a baby plant or a seedling is called germination water helps to soften the seed coat and changes the food stored in the cotyledon into a soluble substance so baby plant uh, uses this soluble food to grow warmth from sunlight speed up the growth of the baby plant and air provides it energy to sprout some seeds uh, remain dormant that is uh, they do not germinate until the growing conditions are suitable when a seed sown in soil gets sufficient warmth air sunlight and water the seed coat breaks the radical in the first part of the embryo which comes out through the micropyle of the seed it grows further and forms the root system of the plant as the seed germinate, the plumoil grows above the ground and form the shoot system. As you can see in the picture, as the root and the shoot grow in size, leaves grow bigger and the cotyledon shrink and eventually falls off. 
so as you can see in the picture these are the various stages four stages of germination of a seed so this is how a seed germinate germinate and what are the requirements of a seeds to germinate as i already explained you that if seeds get right amount of water air sunlight and wa oh, warmth so it need water air sunlight warm as well as soil to germinate so these are the things which a seed need to germinate so i want to end this class here so what we have learned today uh, we, have, we have learned about uh, i have given you an introduction to the lesson as well as i uh, we have learned about the structure of a seed and about the seed germination process what a seed need to germinate such as water air sunlight warmth and soil in the next class i will be discussing about uh, do all plants grow from seeds as well as i will be giving you some question answers uh, from the same uh, paragraph which i have explained just now till then thank you